Sadowski. She's going way, way back. And you can kiss it goodbye. It's gone. You had to show the Mazeroski clip. But there goes Willie. And he makes a miraculous catch. Into deep left center. Breeze hits it in the air to center. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Tonight, the World Series will begin play for the 108th time. There's no script for what will happen, but how many times have dreamers imagined this scenario? Playing through pain. Your team is down by one. Bottom of the ninth. Two outs. Full count. Well, for some, it's not a dream. It's the moment a legend is made. Gibson swings and a fly ball to deep right field. This is going to be a home run. I don't believe what I just saw. I don't believe what I just saw. That's baseball. This is game one of the World Series. The Tigers versus the Giants. Don't worry. Fox won't let you miss a single moment. Postseason baseball here in San Francisco. They pack into this park. They make noise and they make the camera shake. It's game number one of the World Series. The Detroit Tigers, the San Francisco Giants, tonight on Fox. And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. Tim McCarver is coming up in just a second. So let's look at Detroit. They win the division second year in a row. They get by Oakland. They get by the Yankees, and they made it look easy. On the other side, you've got the San Francisco Giants. Down two games to nothing to Cincinnati going on the road, no problem. Down three games to one to the St. Louis Cardinals, no problem. Here they are in the World Series trying to win it for the second time in the last three years. Now, all the momentum they have can hit a brick wall when the opposition is starting a guy like Justin Verlander oh, here in game one. And that's really part of what should be an advantage pitching-wise for the Tigers. It rests with their starting rotation. Clearly, the advantage rests with the starting rotation of the Tigers, led by Verlander. However, if the Giants can score early, get the lead in the middle of the game, then the advantage swings to San Francisco because they've got a much better, more flexible bullpen than Detroit. Let's talk offense. For the Giants, they were led in that NLCS by their two three-hitters, Marco Scudero, Pablo Sandoval. On the other side, you've got easily the most feared 3-4 combination of Miguel Cabrera and Prince Fielder. They are so, so good. Maybe in the game, uh, the thing you want to do with them is try to get them to hit with minimum guys on base. That's why Austin Jackson, to me, is the offensive key as to whether Detroit scores one run or multi runs. Let's uh, thank Billy Crystal for helping us open the show. His new movie, Parental Guidance, opens Christmas Day in which he plays as San Francisco Giants minor league announcer. This is the big leagues, and it's game one coming up next. It's no put on. Baseball's two best teams are about to face off in the 108th edition of the Fall Classic. The only thing left to decide who will be crowned this year's champion. It's game one of the World Series, only on Fox.
15 minutes can save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by DirecTV, don't just watch TV, DirecTV. That's what Bill Webb does night after night. He directs yeah. TV. Right. He's our director. Taco Bell starting lineup for the Tigers. Watch you by Taco Bell. Sometimes you got to live Moss. Austin Jackson leads off in center. Omar Infante is in second, then Miguel Cabrera. Prince Fielder, that great combo. Delman Young, the ALCS MVP. Johnny Peralta, short. He's had a good postseason. Abisail Garcia is out in right. He's a rookie. Alex Avila does the catching, and Justin Verlander. There's nobody better that anybody can throw in a game one than Justin Verlander. And by the way, don't forget, all it takes, one stolen base in this World Series and everybody in America gets a free taco. That's about as simple as it gets. And Justin Verlander, who will be the opposition for Barry Zito, his pregame meal is from Taco Bell. That's a free pop for Taco Bell. And here's the left-hander, Barry Zito. Not a bad pop either. Game five of the National League Championship Series, so important to the Giants. It was win or go home. Well, they went home to play games six and seven. The past is forgotten, however, and now he's got a pitch. The danger with Barry Zito was before game five and is tonight before game one of the World Series. Don't fall behind. Opening pitch is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some bugs. Austin Jackson getting set to lead it off. And you look at the numbers from the regular season on that bottom line, a 300 average, 16 home runs, 66 RBIs, and Tim, he deserves a lot of credit for working hard to limit strikeouts, and he's been much better this year. Not only working hard during the season, but working hard during last offseason with Lloyd McClendon. Off we go, and the first pitch is up and away, ball one from Barry Zito, who wears number 75, a former Cy Young Award winner, that was back in 2002 with the Oakland A's. Ten years later, here he is making his first World Series start. And he is behind on the count, 2-0, and, oh, and both pitches have been up, and I'm sure the adrenaline is coursing through the veins of Barry Zito. As importantly, both pitches have been outside. You've got to clear that front side and try to throw inside part of the plate to right-handed batter. There's a strike, and it's two and one. It's just in game one, the fourth matchup between Cy Young Award winners. It's Zito and the power right-hander Verlander. Here's a 2-1 pitch to Jackson. Popped up. Shallow center, Pagan coming in, so is Pence, and it's Pence. One away. The Giants defensive lineup brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. We've got Gregor Blanco in left, Angel Pagan in center, Hunter Pence is in right, Pablo Sandoval, Brandon Crawford, Marco Scudero, and Brandon Belt around the infield. Buster Posey does the catching for Barry Zito. And you should know by now, every season starts at Dick's. Here is Omar Infante. Who was picked up from the Marlins and after starting slowly he showed the Detroit fans exactly what he can do. A nice addition Dave Dombrowski made in season to shore up second base. Strike one. I'll tell you how good Omar Infante is. Two years ago he was a utility player for the Atlanta Braves and he made the all-star team. That's pretty good. Trying to get on in front of Cabrera if there's better protection in the game. You'd have to uh, try and convince me you couldn't do it <laughs> because protection happens with the guy on deck and the guy on deck is the most feared hitter in the game. Jerry That's Davis true. is the crew chief. He's behind the plate. Dan Iasoni at first field and Colbert, Brian O'Nora, Brian Gorman, Joe West, the blue cowboy in right base hit up the middle. That pitch hung out over the plate and Omar Infante reached out and sent it right back through the box so it's one on one out and here comes Miguel Cabrera the triple crown winner from the American League there are many words to describing I think uh, the best word is terrifying 
He seems like he's been around forever. He's only 29 years old. And for him to do what he did offensively and become the first Triple Crown winner since 1967, Tim, whilst moving from first base to third base defensively, I think is remarkable. That's a, a valid point. Not only does he have to worry about hitting as always, but moving to a new position or a position that he hadn't played in a while. Here's a pitch up and away, and that's a ball from Barry Zito. So Miguel Cabrera, last four Triple Crown winners, have reached the World Series. That includes big number 24 for the Tigers. Check on the runner at first. Mickey Mantle in 56. His team won it all. Frank Robinson in 66. His team won it all. Then Yaz, who was the last to do it, 67. His team lost to. Which team was that? Uh, who was their catcher? Cardinales. Want to know the count on Cabrera? One ball, one strike. And a pretty good pitch. Zito doesn't get the call, and the county is now two and zero oh instead of even at one and one. That was a breaking ball and missed inside. The one thing about Jerry Davis, the home plate umpire, he has a very tight strike zone. To get strikes called, it's got to be on the plate. No iffy phantom strike calls off the plate. Here's a 2 0. Down and in 3 0. Look at the numbers for Miguel Cabrera in 2012. <laughs> I mean, all world all world season number one in the American League in all those different categories and since 2009 he's led the American League overall in all the triple crown categories you keep saying triple crown that's home runs RBI's average he was number one in the league there's a strike from Zito in the count three and one Carl your shrimp your shrimp your shrimp was quoted as saying that he was surprised that the Triple Crown took so long to be renewed 45 years. Here's a 3 1. That's a strike, and it's 3 and 2. The velocity won't get much above 86. That was 85. That was in the strike zone, but Cabrera wanted it more inside part of the play. Going from first. Already in this first inning, the hardest Zito's thrown, 85. The lowest velocity, 72. That was a change up, and Fonte hit up the middle. Cabrera on three and two takes ball four and down to second is Infante and that pitch awfully close so much so that Posey popped up and was getting ready to throw down but it was called out of the strike zone two on one out. The one thing a, a catcher wants with the runner running at first base is a quick call from the home plate umpire. Posey thought it was a strike but that pitch was low. Good call by Jerry Davis. If you don't get a quick call from the home plate umpire, you may throw it to second base needlessly. Now it's Prince Fielder. What a great first year in a Tiger uniform, dealing with Zito, and he pops it into shallow left. Out goes the shortstop, and Crawford's got a two out. Fielder, who was hitting 211 prior to that at bat, flies to left, 211 for the postseason. And we take a look at the four keys to this series and your overview of these major categories. Well, those two check marks, uh, starting pitching, that's how good the Tigers starters are and how hot they have been. But the bullpen, defense, and base running goes to the Giants and the power to the power laden Detroit Tigers. Here's Delman Young. Five straight games with an RBI this postseason for Delman. He had 
as he fouls it back. The game winning RBI in each of the four wins over the Yankees. And Fonte, the lead man at second. Cabrera on at first with two out. What Delman Young did against the Yankees, he cheated on that inside pitch looking inside. The inside part of the plate's a dangerous pitch to Young right here. Here are the numbers from his series against the Yankees pitching the 0-1. Left side, Sandoval got a weird hop, corralled it, gets the force out. And Zito gets around a hit in the walk after a half in game one in San Francisco, no score. Steal a base, steal a taco. Liv Moss. How about more Taco Bell? Taco Bell starting lineup. I'm getting hungry. I'm eating since breakfast. Sometimes you gotta live Moss. Angel Pagan leaves it off in center. Marco Scudero is at second, batting second. And Pablo Sandoval had a very good LCS. Scudero was the MVP. Buster Posey trying to get hot this postseason. 100 pence is in right. Brandon Belt at first. Gregor Blanco in left. Brandon Crawford is the shortstop. And Barry Zito, who had a bunt base hit for an RBI in his game five start, he is pitching and batting ninth. But here you go. I mean, Justin Verlander, the numbers are overwhelming. He is the epitome of excellence, and he's scary. He gets stronger as the game goes along, and as A.J. said in his pregame comments, about 94, 95, instead of the 91, 92 that he was featuring earlier in the year, says Jim Lee. Yeah, so he's going to come out of the gate throwing harder mm -hmm. than he typically does, and then the, the unbelievable part of Verlander's game like a gathering storm. Yeah, he, he goes into the eighth inning, the ninth inning. They don't worry about pitch count. He throws harder than he has all game. Amazing. Here is Angel Pagan to start the night. 94 on his first pitch of the night. Misses for ball one, and I think you nailed it early. I don't think we're going to see any cheap strikes called tonight. Nope. Pagan, Scudero, and Sandoval. Here's a 1 0 pitch. A ball and a strike from the right hander who was part of a Detroit starting rotation this postseason. It has an ERA of 1.02. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Chased it upstairs. Every pitch has been 94, and that almost. 
knocked the helmet off the head of Angel Pagan that swing, and it's one and two. And you know, Joe, you'll hit the low fastball. You're not going to touch that one around the letters. Forget it. Make him bring the ball down. Of course, by bringing it down, it might be that devastating curveball he has, or splitter, or change. One ball, two strikes. The guy's leading in. off. And after the pitch up and away. You and I saw Justin Verlander, and neither one of us wanted to make eye contact with him before the game. He was he was fiery two hours before this game started. Like a tiger in a cage. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a one-two pitch. Pagan trying to work his way on base. Still in the hole one and two. There's no way we'll get through the end of this replay before the next pitch. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. It's super slow-mo. It's too slow. <laughs> Here's a one-two and a chopper right side for Prince Fielder. Flips for the out. It's still going somewhere in our production. One out, nobody on for Scudero. Here's what Justin Verlander's done to him in the postseason. I mean, he is, he's been almost unhittable. Yeah. 3 0 record, ERA at three quarters of a run. Opponents not hitting anything against him. And we talked to Jim Leland before the game. He said, I don't even think about pitch count with Verlander, and he's good for 130 pitches or, or more. Here is Scudero, the MVP of the last round. He hit 500. Takes a ball. Jim Leland saying that uh, the reason he selected Verlander to start game one, as if it weren't an easy choice, he said, Justin told me he was starting game one, and I said, okay, here's a 1 0. <laughs> On the inside corner, a ball and a strike. Jim Leland, who we've shown you a few times already in his seventh year with the Detroit Tigers, he took this team to the World Series in 06, matched up against his good friend Tony LaRussa. Cardinals won that series in five games. Tigers have not won at all since 1984. Good breaking ball. It drops a little low, but that's the first look at that pitch, and it is knee buckling. It is tight. I mean, it's got to be impossible to hit after mid 90s and above on the fastball. Yeah, you've got too many things to think about. You're trying to hit a 95 mile an hour fastball and then wait to hit a curve. Broken bat, ground ball to Peralta. Gets a funny hop and got him for the out. Good play by Peralta, who does not have range to his left or right, but has very good range in on a ball. That's a big league play by a big league shortstop. Got him. And a good call by Dan Iasonia, the first base umpire. He got it right. How about the defense for Detroit? Brought to you by Dick Sporting Goods. You know that Peralta's at short. Delman Young in left, typically a DH. Austin Jackson in right. Abaseo Garcia is in right. Jackson in center. Then it's Cabrera, Peralta, Infante, Fielder. Avila is the catcher. And he has worked the most this season with Verlander. Strike one to Pablo Sandoval. Sandoval has been red hot. Reaching for that pitch. Fouling it back going to. Sandoval and Scudero in that LCS combined to hit 404. Two homers, 10 RBIs. The rest of this lineup hit 217. With three homers, 21 RBIs. So this team is in the final round of the postseason because of the 2-3 combo, at least offensively, for the Giants. Counts 0 and 2. And Sandoval hits it into center. Back at the wall. Come on.
one nothing Giants on a home run by Pablo Sandoval. That's a situation where Justin Verlander did exactly what he wanted to do. Up and in. Sometimes you have to tip your cap to the hitter. And I think Justin would say that. That's one of them. How did he get on top of that ball? I don't know. He's a lethal low ball hitter and usually can't handle that, especially when it's 95 miles an hour. Wow. How about that jolt for the home crowd? That's a wow right there. Strike one on the inside corner to Posey. Sandoval came in over his last nine postseason games hitting 378. And he's picking up where he left off against the Cardinals. That's up and in. And we count one and one. On 0-2 counts this year, major leaguers hit 149. 149. Count, of course, was 0 and 2. 1 and 2 to count on Buster Posey. He's got that orangish mohawk. <laughs> Not a total mohawk, but they love him here in San Francisco and they love him even more now. 1 0. They, they love their panda. And that's down in a count of 2 and 2 on Posey. He's hitting only 178 this postseason. Hunter Pence on deck. You just don't hit many 0 2 fastballs out of the strike zone against Justin Verlander. Just doesn't happen. Breaking ball gets Posey looking. The inning is over, but the first run is scored by the Giants. Somehow. Sandoval got on top of that pitch.
Go get him, Barry. That's what they said down in the dugout after Sandoval hit the solo home run to make it one nothing. <laughs> Work is cut out for Barry Zito as he deals with Johnny Peralta. Peralta, a very good postseason he's putting together, hitting 343. He's played an outstanding shortstop. Had a good second half, and he has added to it in the postseason. One ball, one strike. Went deep twice in the clinching game four. Was at home against the Yankees to end the ALCS. Miguel Cabrera also went deep in that game. One ball, one strike. Zito flips one up there at 80 miles per hour. Peralta out in front of it, strike two. Trying to hook that ball down the third baseline with two strikes, however, Peralta starts going to right field. It's very good power the other way, but it's wasted in this ballpark. The one two from Zito. Put away, two balls, two strikes. Zito got a game four start at Cincinnati, went two and two thirds. That was it. But he got the ball again for game five. That was in the NLCS from Bruce Bochy, and he went seven and two thirds, no runs, six hits. He was outstanding in on the hands of Peralta. And to me, you know, you can look at the job by Vogelsong in game six and Matt Cain in game seven. But to me, that start that he gave these Giants launched them into. Winning those last three games and getting to the World Series. After that game, the Giants thought, yes, we can, yes, we can, and they did. Two and two to count. Posey hangs on, and that's the first strikeout of the night for Barry Zito. And for more on this veteran left hander, down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, we all kind of had the idea that Bruce Bochy would hand the ball to Barry Zito here in game one if the Giants got to the World Series. Now, when Bochy tried to actually call Barry Zito after they won the NLCS, he couldn't get a hold of it. Zito actually left his phone in the Giants' clubhouse. Of course, this start very special for Bruce Bochy and Barry Zito. He was left off of three postseason rosters when the Giants were in the playoffs in 2010. And what impressed Bochy the most is that when he told him he wasn't on the roster, he'd go through a bullpen session to stay fresh. What did Bochy tell Zito when he handed him the ball? I'm happy to give it to you. And Zito happy to get this start, as I mentioned, 10 years after winning the 2002 Cy Young Award. That's the longest layoff for a Cy Young Award winner to start his first World Series game in the history of Major League Baseball. Ten seasons between Cy Young and first World Series start. As the rookie, Abisail Garcia, has burst onto the big league scene and had a very good series against the Yankees. Fouls it away. It's one and one. And two years ago, Barry Zito was not on the postseason roster. All three, the Division League Championship Series and World Series. Not just one, but three. One ball, one strike. One out, nobody on. Garcia takes strike two. That's a change up and a good one. Actually taking something off that that breaking ball. How pitchers do that is with the grip. The tighter the grip, the slower the pitch. Another foul. Garcia was the minor league hitter of the year. For the Detroit Tigers, he came up at the very end of August and he had more RBIs in that series against the Yankees than he had at any point in any series during the regular season. In fact, more total RBIs. This postseason four, he drove home three in 23 games for Jim Leland. Garcia waits with one out, nobody on, and gets time from the home plate umpire. Jerry Davis. You know the one thing he's only, as you said only 21 years old. The one thing is you, you don't see many young hitters with a right handed hitters with the grip off the bat. That is very unconventional for a 21 year old. That's down and in two and two. That left hand is actually overlapping the knob of the bat. He is big. Right handed hitter and some refer to him as Miguel Cabrera Jr. 
as he fills out Jim Leland said eventually he'll be a 25 30 home run guy. Mm -hmm. He then said I won't be here <laughs> to witness it but he will be that type hitter. Good pitch by Zito jammed him Crawford two out. And that guy's played the heck out of shortstop in the second half for Bruce Bochy and in this postseason. That's the one great thing about the postseason. You have a chance to see a young guy develop with a fine arm. Brandon Crawford can flat play shortstop. Topped by Garcia. And Crawford makes it easily. We talked to the guy who received that throw as Alex Avila stands in the number eight hitter. Jim Leland wants him to be more aggressive. First pitch swinging, getting back to the bag is Belt for the out. He almost ranged too far to his right. Belt told us before the game, other teams' first base coaches remark about how Brandon Crawford's arm is so strong. He and Scooter all make plays in the inning, one nothing after one and a half. Fox is sponsored by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Well, if it's Hunter Pence in the postseason, you know you're going to see some action in the dugout before the game. And this guy plays the game wide eyed, has a ball. And while the numbers haven't been there this postseason, his support and that. Rally stuff certainly has. He's been a big part of their success. Getting by the Reds, getting by the Cardinals, and here he is taking on Verlander and the Tigers. That one rolls up there, up and in ball one. There has been a saying in baseball for years that if a hitter is a free swinger, he's a Bible hitter. Thou shalt not pass. And Gideon is Hunter, Hunter Pence in the true sense of the word. Here's a swing and a miss, and he's been giving those fiery speeches since back 
before game three in Cincinnati of the division series he told us start of the NLCS he really didn't want to do that every game but because baseball players are so superstitious they make it <laughs> good pitch down and away Gideon strike two don't throw in the pitch he can reach Verlander gave up that first inning home run to Sandoval and now the one two strikeout number two that Posey looking to end the first he gets Pence swinging to start the second two good breaking balls out of the strike zone. And with one out nobody on the batter will be belt started to say and then the end of the inning happened that belt told us before the game that the infielders he receives throws from have such good arms that the opposition's first base coach will often talk to them. Crawford's got a cannon at short. He said Sandoval as a former catcher almost throws a riser over to first base. He's got a good arm as well and Scudero has just solidified second base for the Giants. Strike one and that foul off to the left. Belt homered in game seven. The NLCS. He said it felt good. He thought he drilled the baseball. It just got out into right. He said there are just some nights where it's almost impossible to hit a home run in this ballpark. Fewest home runs hit here than any other park in the big leagues this season. Strike two. Even the shortest of home runs feel good. To a I would imagine. <laughs> Wind blown, it doesn't matter. Wrigley Field, wind firing out. Gone is gone. Gone is gone. 94 Baby. mile an hour fastball misses in the count two and two. On deck is Blanco. Giants are three and three here at home this postseason, even their record by winning game seven two nights ago. Here's pop up. Shallow center late break by Jackson. He's there. What a good play. And he showed his closing speed to get there for out number two. You know what? Kurt Flood, who could catch a fly ball with the best of them, used to say, use the bill of your cap if you're a center fielder. If the ball is below the bill of the cap, break forward. If it's above the bill of the cap, break back, and you always have a chance to make up for it with speed. And that's what happened to Jackson then. Blanco digs his way in with two out, nobody on. Trying to extend this inning for Brandon Crawford, the left handed hitting shortstop on deck. Ball one outside. Verlander was the second overall pick back in 2004, came up in 2006. Right hander was the rookie of the year. He's been an MVP, Cy Young Award winner. He's thrown a couple of no hitters. And he hits 95 as he starts to heat up here in the second. Only pitcher in baseball history to win rookie of the year, Cy Young, MVP, and start an all star game. And here he is starting game one of the World Series. One one strike two these two teams at least partly responsible for the National League hosting the first game of the World Series Justin Verlander was the loser of the all star game Matt Cain of the Giants was the winner. Matt. Posey was the catcher breaking ball just missed. Two big bats, both Melky Cabrera and Pablo Sandoval, figured in the scoring. Melky was the MVP, and then he was suspended mid August, testing positive for a performance enhancing drug. Second in the league with his average at the time. Here's one easy for Infante to his right. And it's a 1 2 3 inning for Justin Verlander as we go to the third. Here in San Francisco. Glad you're with us tonight on Fox World Series game one one nothing Giants after two.
State Farm for auto, home, life, and banking. Get to a better state. Have to search long and hard to find a better city, at least a prettier one. As we continue on in San Francisco at AT&T Park. Third inning now, 1-0, and Verlander goes up there hacking at the first pitch. Brandon Belt to his left, one out. That was quick. And Verlander, who was 0 for 4 during the regular season, is now 0 for 1 of the postseason. He didn't look too interested. Tonight, State Farm get to a better state recap. We go back to the All-Star game. Started by Verlander, and a big piece of that bad first inning was a three-run triple by Pablo Sandoval of the Giants. But you know the story continues here in the postseason as Austin Jackson takes high. Ball one and tonight in the first inning with an 0 2 pitch. A 411 foot home run over the wall in center for the only run so far. State Farm for auto home life and banking get to a better state. And Joe, we said uh, that nobody hits an 0 2 pitch off of Justin Verlander out of the ballpark, and we were right. Nobody this year. Has hit an 0-2 pitch out of the ballpark against Verlander. We just kind of threw it out there. At least I did. I had no idea, but there were 192 home runs hit on an 0-2 count this year in the American League. Actually, in the major leagues, none off Verlander. None. That's the first one. Two balls and a strike. Austin Jackson at the plate. One out, nobody on. Time called. Eric Karras is with us. First of all, where are you? Up in left field, EK? I'm out in left field uh, with the people, Joe. Yeah, well, enjoy that. And uh, after this pitch, talk about that pitch sequence and what we saw from Verlander in the first. Go well, ahead. It's, it, well, it's interesting. Of you know, the six outs he's recorded so far, five of them have been on off speed pitches. You saw Sandoval 0 2, he went at him with a fastball. Everybody else, slider, curve, change. The only guy that's been retired on fastball, Brandon Belt. Here's a base hit up the middle off the bat of Austin Jackson and he's on with one out here in the third. Here's the pitch sequence to Sandoval. The strike was down and he fouled one off. 0-2, see you later, only run of the game. By the way, if Eric Karras is a man of the people out there, do the, do the Giant fans realize that they are amongst the a guy who played for the Dodgers. Oh, they know. Many... <laughs> oh, they know, right, Eric? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm with AJ Brzezinski, though. I think he might be more hated than I am out here. <laughs> He's your cover. <laughs> one on, one out. Here's Infante. He takes a pitch up and away. Omar Infante singled his first time back into center. Austin Jackson, the runner at first. Fonte is now 11 of 36 this postseason. Very good at handling the bat and against an off speed guy with Jackson's speed, a good time to run. Jackson during the regular season stole 12 but was caught nine times, so the percentage not that great. Has not stolen a base this postseason. Didn't need to against the Yankees. No. Because they were completely shut down. Here is a 1 0 pitch. Like Infante, Tim was trying to shoot that pitch into right. Yeah, he's very good at doing that. Very adept at going to right field. In his second stint with the Tigers, after spending a very successful two or three years with Atlanta. Picked up from Miami in season. He wasn't the only. Player to come to the Tigers. Anibal Sanchez, one of their very good right handed starters, and scheduled to start game three of this World Series, came with it. You're a little surprised that Scherzer was not the pitcher. One thing we did not ask Jim Leland tonight, I thought Scherzer would start game three and Sanchez game four, but I think they want Sanchez 
if he goes two games, if, if there is a game six. Scherzer's been battling a little shoulder fatigue. Right, right. And, I mean, you wouldn't know it by his pitching stuff. No. Strikeouts piled up. Struck out 10 in that game four start. Yes, he has different colored eyes. <laughs> and proud of it. Six and two thirds, one run, two hits in the clincher at home against the Yankees. Two balls and a strike, one on, one out. See if the Tigers want to run. Not going, and a foul off to the right, strike two. Tomorrow night in game two, it's Doug Fister against Madison Bumgarner. Doug Fister will join us live from the dugout in the fourth. Two balls, two strikes, one on, one out. He went. Struck him out. Two down. Infante tried to hold up, couldn't. Inside fastball. Infante thought it was a strike, thought better of it. Too late. And went too far. Yep. It brings in Miguel Cabrera. Cabrera has won it all before Eric Karras talked about it during the pregame. Did so with the Marlins back in 03. Big looping breaking ball for strike one. We talked to Miguel before the game as you look at the replay of strike one. That flops in there. And Cabrera loved that time off. Five days off after the sweep of the Yankees to let his ankle heal. Sprained his right ankle about a month ago. But he's ready to go in the 0 1. He is hit on the line into left, and there's Blanco. What a catch! And the inning is over. What a play by number seven. Bottom of the third inning. Giants bat up one.
the bottom of the third inning and <laughs> nobody has more fun in this park and they show <laughs> that young lady on the uh, scoreboard here every game. She's great and this place has fun during the inning and between innings which we talked about during the NLCS and this is developed and yeah this probably sounds like kissing up to the home crowd but this is developed into in my estimation I have not been in a major league baseball stadium that's louder than this and as uh, Bruce Jenkins of the Chronicle said it's a park of ridiculous fun and he's right and noise yeah and they are synchronized locked into the music on the screen with each other with their team with the fake cable cars I mean it's it's just wonderful Crawford with a count 0 and 2 will be followed by Barry Zito then Angel Pagan super Phantom <laughs> Cam Slomo oh, that's beautiful. Crawford 206 this postseason. He checks his swing. Verlander's upset. He thought the pitch was good enough for strike three. Again, Jerry Davis with a tight strike zone behind home plate. Into center. Jackson is there to his left, one out. MasterCard is proud to present more than $4 million to stand up to cancer. Raised from the Eat, Drink, and Be Generous campaign. MasterCard joined here by its Priceless Moments winners and Stand Up to Cancer Scientific Advisory Committee members and co-founders. For more information, visit standuptocancer.org slash MasterCard. MasterCard is the official payment card of Major League Baseball. Also in that group, nine-year-old cancer survivor, Justin Miller. Nice moment here at at and It's Barry Zito. We had a bunt base hit for an RBI in that game five start in St. Louis. Will be challenged by Verlander. One ball, one strike. Four out of 53 on the regular season. Swing in the bat for Zito. Not known as a good hitter. Facing the game's best. And I think Verlander will probably stick with that pitch. And very shortly, Barry Zito will go back to the dugout. Well, if Barry does make contact, he'll have to hit the ball to left field. Laws of physics. Making ball. I mean, you saw that little smile on the face of Zito after the swing and the miss on. The 1 1 fastball. Now he gets a hook. Now he waits for a 2 2 pitch. Uh huh. Strikeout number three. Two out here in the third inning and back to the top of the lineup and Angel Pagan. Barry Zito is worried about at bats, not hits. If he has three at bats, he's pitching well. Even two at bats, he's gone to the fifth inning in a game like this. Well, these two teams obviously coming off time off. The Tigers more than the Giants, but the Giants had a day off. As Pagan fouls it back, and we asked Bruce Bochy before the game about a short leash for Zito. He's obviously pitching well again, but he's got Lindsay coming his bullpen. He's got good lefties, good righties. That's where his strength is, and I think any sign of trouble, Bochy's going to think about going down to that pen. Absolutely. And a guy like Lincecum is so handy. I mean, normally he could only start two games, but if it goes seven games, he could be in three games, not two. And he's so different. From the other giant pitchers. That's what makes him so valuable. Here's a 1 1 foul straight back. And the count 1 and 2. They get ripped by Pagan, who is getting right around the 200 mark. There's Barry Zito 
He's thinking about the top of the fourth when he deals with Fielder Young and Peralta. Still one and two. Barry's still talking to himself from the dugout. A 34 year old left hander. Here's a one two. Breaking ball is outside the strike zone, two and two. Zito signed that seven year deal before the 2007 season. He signed through 2013, so next year, and then a club option for 2014. Got big money. He hasn't been a big winner, but or did he come up huge in game five of the NLCS? As Pagan just got a piece. We talked about it uh, the six years of ineffectiveness, with the exception of this year when Barry was 15 and 8 will all be forgiven if they beat the Cardinals in game five. Well he did seven and two thirds shutout ball and if he does it again tonight in game one of the World Series then the slate is really clean. Here is a two two pitch with two out nobody on but John fouls it back did it back. The Giants have won Zito's last 13 starts. He's won his last eight decisions. Includes game five and that 13 consecutive wins in his start is the longest active streak around baseball. Here comes another 2 2 from Verlander. Pagan's made him work. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Left side, Cabrera hits the bag and that's a base hit. Pagan will end up at second base with two out. You know, it's rare that a first base coach comes into play. Almost never. But the ball hit the bag, and Pagan's busting it down the first base, thinking there's going to be a play on it. Roberto Kelly, the first base coach, points towards second, and Pagan took it with two outs. I mean, you almost never have a first base coach come into play about anything. All they do is say, watch the line drive, but Roberto Kelly was right on the money, pointing to second, and Pagan took advantage of it. So it's a bad break double against Verlander. And the batter is Scudero, runner at second, two out. Scudero is hitting 10 straight during the postseason, and you can see Kelly get into the picture on the right side of it sending Pagan down to second with two up. Want to know the count on Scudero. Coming off a 14 hit NLCS. Trying to squirt it down the right side and the count even one one. Last year in the ALCS game five, Miguel Cabrera, who could only watch as that ball hit the bag, did the same to the Rangers on a ball that hit third. Put in a perfect spot. The deflection for a double. But that was the end of a good at bat by Andrew Pagan, who really had to battle. Justin Verlander. Who's behind on the count to Scudero, two and one. Good pitch, strike two. Good curveball from Verlander in a fastball count. He can leave a lot of hitters helpless. 
as he did Scudero on that locked job. Giants lead 1 0. A chance for another run. They need a hit from Scudero. Verlander has struck out three. Blocked by Avila. Full count. Alex Avila has caught 23 of Verlander's starts, and Justin feels much more comfortable with Avila behind the plate. Nothing against Gerald Laird. There's a certain rhythm that a catcher and a pitcher have, and Avila and Verlander have it. Playoff to the right. Scudero, one of the most tenacious two strike hitters in the game. He has swung through only 15 pitches since August 1st. Toughest to strike out in the league. Mm. Two tough assignments going at each other right here. Coming to Marco. Breaking ball, base hit in the center. Pagan will score, and it's 2 0 Giants as Jackson kicks it in center. Scudero still red hot. If you're a baseball fan, I know what you're thinking. He did it again. And how do you get this guy out? Right now, you don't. That was a 3 2 curveball hit right back through the box. And Scooter Road delivers again. That ball with Scooter Row right now has got to look like a watermelon. So the double that hits the bag and then Scudero delivers as Sandoval takes ball one. Pablo homered his first time up. A throw go to first. The fielder who was off the bag a bit. Applied a late tag on Scudero. Yeah, Justin picked off Prince on that, not Marco. Pitching coach Jeff Jones, who typically doesn't have to worry about visits when Verlander makes a start. Yeah, along with all the other things of Justin Verlander, as he is smiling, He's like what? Are, what are you going to say? Yeah, yeah, what are you doing out here? What are you doing out here? <laughs> That's Gibson-esque right there. He was stunned to turn around and see Jeff Jones making his way out of the dugout. Only time either Jeff Jones or Jim Leland has visited the mound, one would think, is in case Justin Verlander got hurt as he 
There was a scare back in September, September 24th, with his left shoulder. The 2 0. Fly ball into left. Back at the wall. He's homered again. The Panda takes the trip, and it's 4 0 Giants here in the third. Balls that travel the total of 190 miles an hour. 95 miles an hour for each one. Man. Sandoval turned one around to center and now goes with, with this one into left. And it's 4 0 here in the third inning for these red hot Giants against Justin Verlander. And Justin can't believe it. Even a wow from Verlander. Two and one on Buster Posey. So a visit from Jeff Jones during that at bat. And at bat that ends with a two run home run. Now Posey gets one into left. And he's on with two out here in the third. In game seven against the Cardinals, we said the Giants can do no wrong. Well, thus far, in game one of the World Series, that statement, I think we'll stand by that. Runs being scored with two outs tonight. The bullpen will get busy with Rick Porcello getting loose. Here in the third inning is Hunter Pence. Takes ball one down and away. having more fun than him. Strike one on Pence. And remember, all this started on that ball that was chopped to the left side by Pagan that hit the bag, got away from Cabrera for a double. And Scudero, then Sandoval. Sit by Posey in the count two and one on Pence. That is real momentum right there, Joe. With two outs and nobody on, Pagan hits the ball down the line, and everybody's thinking, if at all, if it's a base hit, he gets to first to two out infield hit. So what? Well, the ball hits the bag, goes to left field. Scudero gets a two out, two strike hit, and then the second home run for Panda Ball. Two and one. I think I just said uh, Panda Ball. I mixed the Pandas, Sandoval, and it came out Panda Ball. <laughs> one on, two out. I'm going to coin that. Okay. T shirts waiting to be made. Tens of dollars. Here's a 2 2 pitch, ground ball left side, and a good pickup by Miguel Cabrera. Rally started with two out. And the ball that hit the base. Base hit Scudero. Two run shot. Send the ball. Four nothing. Giants after three.
Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's by the completely redesigned 2013 Chevrolet Malibu. And by Pepsi. Crack open a Pepsi and live for now. Back to the hill is Barry Zito. It's 4 0 as we go to the fourth inning. And it'll be fielder Delman Young and Johnny Peralta for the Tigers against Zito. Giants pitchers have allowed one run over the last 31 innings. Started in the eighth inning of game four against the Cardinals. Cards didn't bat in the ninth, and then they took care of starting with Zito in game five and all. The Cardinal bats. Fielder takes a strike. We're joined by Doug Fister. The outstanding right hander for the Detroit Tigers during the inning and uh, that was shocking what happened in the bottom of the third inning this this Giants team is rolling right now Doug you know they're, they're swinging the bats well um, they're all playing uh, very hard with one another right now and so uh, you know we got to do some things to combat that and uh, you know got to really just work on keeping the ball down and uh, using the defense how about extra rest you know everybody talks about your lineup but extra rest that you guys are all working on in the rotation coming into this World Series. Yeah, I think it's uh, we used it to our advantage. Um, the, the rest was needed. We, we definitely got uh, uh, our work in. We were at the ballpark every day. We were getting. Uh, Here's a uh, base hit into right center off the bat of Prince Fielder to start the fourth. Go ahead, Doug. Sorry. No. A, uh, anytime we get a hit, that's a good thing. But uh, no, we were in the ballpark. You know, we were working out, getting uh, some sim games done, some inner squads, and uh, making sure we're, we're staying sharp. So. Uh, we're definitely uh, we definitely use the rest to uh, to our advantage. You had a couple uh, situations with injury during the season. How's your body feeling right now? Right now everything's feeling good. Uh, you know I mean it's uh, you know, obviously a little chilly here and so you got to stay warm and stay uh, stay stretched. But for the most part everything's good. So uh, looking forward to tomorrow. Doug uh, when you allow that first hitter of an inning to get on the chances go up dramatically for a team to score and you really bear down on that uh, that first guy don't you absolutely you know your focus is to get strike one and uh, you know that's a big thing as, as a pitcher so uh, you know making sure that the first uh, first guy doesn't get on is, is uh, one of our main focuses Zito with the leadoff man on fired a strike and now gets a swinging strike on Delman Young who Doug Fister was so good for you guys in that ALCS against the Yankees. Absolutely. He swung the bat uh, very well. He, he likes uh, he definitely likes hitting in uh, Yankee Stadium. So uh, you know just uh, hopefully he can carry it on right now. He, he took some good uh, good at bats in the inner squads and and uh, you know, carrying over right now. Here's a chop. It's a fair ball. This will be a double play. Out at second. And then they throw it around as this ball was out in front of the plate. A tag of Delman Young and the out at second on the tag of Prince Fielder. And Jim Leland is going to find out what happened. I think Posey tagged the body of Delman Young, fired to second, and they tagged Fielder for the out. And it's a double when play. When you make the tag, that takes the force out. And that ball was a fair ball. Delman Young refused to run. Had he run, then Posey has to throw to second base, then get the force, and it's doubtful that the return throw would have gotten Delman Young. But by staying at home, he presented Posey with the chance to make the tag. They threw to second, or Posey did, and Scudero made the tag. So now with two out, nobody on. Here's Peralta with a fly ball into right. So much for your good luck, Doug Fister. <laughs> Go get him tomorrow night. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, we appreciate your time. A double play after the leadoff hit by Fielder. Peralta flies to right through three and a half. There's another look at it. That was out in front of the plate. The tag, the tag. Four nothing after three and a half.
get to the game with Chevrolet, the official vehicle of Major League Baseball. Find your chance to win an all-new 2013 Malibu at WorldSeries.com. Slash Malibu and slashing at it is Brandon Belt coming up empty strike one. It will be Belt. Blanco has made a nice catch out in left and Brandon Crawford as Barry Zito is through four scoreless innings four nothing Giants Strike two They'll fly to center his first time up Close season the first three starts and the difference Four earned runs doubling what he had allowed in three previous starts two against Oakland one against the Yankees and the count one and two on belt home plate umpire is Jerry Davis he's wearing a microphone for us tonight but you hear how that sounded at the plate on the double play on the top of the inning that's up and away two and two and with Verlander scheduled to hit third in the fifth inning. This could be a short one for the right hand. A rare short one. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Outside a full count. Belt facing Verlander for the first time tonight draws a leadoff walk. First walk of the night by Verlander and back to the audio from home plate umpire Jerry Davis on the double play. Out here. And then it took a tag on the back end of it. Second base umpire Field and Colbreth made sure Scudero hung on. It was a double play ball with Posey feeding Scudero. And Al Albuquerque, the right hander, starts to loosen as Verlander steps off. After thinking about that play, it was a very alert play by Buster Posey. But even had Delman Young run or tried to run to first base, had he hit the ball or had the ball hit him, then he's out. But you don't get a double play. But any way you look at it, had he run, the Tigers would have been much, much better off. Here's a foul tip off the bat of Blanco, strike one. Gregor is first time grounded out. We talked about it during the NLCS, but Elke Cabrera was suspended August 15th. And that day, Blanco basically took over his spot in this lineup. And since then, here at AT&T Park, Blanco hit 361. He can run, doesn't provide a ton of power. With only five home runs and time called at the plate prior to the 0-1 pitch. The Giants... Put Melky Cabrera back on the 40 man roster off the suspended list. The suspension ended before the NLCS. It covered the 50 games. Giants could have activated Melky Cabrera, did not after the long layoff. Here they are in the World Series without a guy who Tim was not only the MVP of the All Star game, but was. Melky Cabrera, at least in the early MVP talk in the National League, yeah. before he got caught. But it made no sense whatsoever to put him on the postseason roster. None. Bad for morale. And I don't think Melky Cabrera expected to be put on the postseason roster. Let's go down to Ken Rosenthal, who's with us, Ken. Well, Joe, he's got that long layoff, so how effective would he even be if he were here? And the other thing is, the Giants vibe. They have like a band of brothers. And Cabrera was not part of that. Cabrera left this team basically without saying a word to his teammates, and they don't want to disrupt that right now. Well, it is obvious that they made the right decision. Absolutely. Blanco waits for the 2-1. Two 2-2. Two two. 
The other part of it, though, is they put Melky Cabrera back on the 40-man roster so they would have that exclusive window after the World Series to be able to negotiate with Melky if they want to bring him back. Buster Posey had the highest average across baseball, not just in the National League. They lost Brian Wilson. They lost Melky Cabrera. Wilson went down in April. And here they are in the World Series as Blanco strikes out looking for round number one in the inning. Good pitch by Verlander. Drills the inside corner. Strikeout number four for Justin Verlander, and the batter is Crawford. Crawford 0 for 1. Strike one. Mentioned Bob Gibson earlier and cut from that same clock out of the same type mold as Verlander. Was Gibson a guy who added velocity as the game went deeper? He never lost it. He started strong. You know, he was like a lot of other great pitchers. Seaver was like that. You had to get him early if you're going to get him. And the same is true with Verlander. Got to get him early. It took uh, Bob. It, Inning and a half to loosen up. And once that happened, there was no slowing him down. I don't know if he gained speed, but he didn't lose it. One ball, one strike on Crawford, who lined to left his first time up. He just got a piece and got one and two. Here in San Francisco, Joe, uh, probably the greatest game ever pitched on July 2nd, 1963, between Juan Marichal and Warren Spahn. We say that because the great Verlanders on the mound. That night was a 16 inning, one nothing giant win. Both pitchers going all the way. Willie Mays with a game winning hit in the bottom of the 16. Juan Marichal that night threw 234 pitches. Runner goes, round ball right side off the bat of Crawford for Infante two out. Warren Spahn faced 56 hitters that night. Juan Marichal faced 59 hitters. And Herman Franks, the manager of the Giants, after every inning, he wanted to take the Dominican dandy, Juan Marichal, out of the, out of the game. And Marichal said, if that old man can pitch, I'm going to pitch. I'm pitching as long as he does. So the 42-year-old Spahn and Marichal, Goes 16 innings head to head. Probably the greatest game ever pitched at Candlestick. Verlander with two out in the inning, a runner at second. Very Zito at the plate. This is as big a mismatch as we'll see the entire World Series. Zito struck out his first time, and he's ahead on the count here, 1 0. Brandon Belt, the runner at second, two out. Was moving on that ground ball hit by Crawford. 2 0. Up third in the fifth inning, so this could be it. The 29 year old right hander. Two out, belted second. The 2 1 pitch. Two and two. And just in case, Zito. Wanted to try and drop one down like he did in game five in St. Louis against Lance Lynn. Cabrera is pulled in at third. He went back two steps after that second strike. Here's a 2 2 pitch. How about that? Base hit into left field. Here comes Belts. It's 5 nothing, and 
Sido has an RBI base hit with two out in the fourth. We were talking about the laws of physics the last time Zito was up, saying that if he made contact, it had to be to left field. Well, he makes contact beyond the outstretched glove of Cabrera, and Delman Young's throw is in the ground. It went straight in the ground. Bell was going to score anyway. Right. The throw didn't matter, but how about Zito? And how about four straight games for the Giants starting pitchers to knock in a run? That's a sound he has not heard in this park too often. The sound of Barry Barry. They used to say it for somebody else around here. When Barry Manilow was playing in a concert. Or Barry Bond. Oh. <laughs> Barry Manilow. Pitches up and away to Angel Pagan. Zito, they don't hold against him at first with two out. I got you. The point is, they know how to <laughs> chant Barry. One on, two out, one ball, one strike. Verlander, strike two. To the count. This started with a leadoff walk. It's one of those moments. One on, two out. The next fouled out of play left side off the bat of Pagano. Hit that double off the third base bag in the third. He scored on an RBI hit with Scooter at the plate. It was followed by a two out, two run shot by Sandoval. They made it four nothing. It's now five nothing. The latest RBI by Zito. Here is a one two pitch. Good rip by Pagan. And that's as hard as Verlander's thrown all night. That was 97. Dave Dombrowski, who is the president, CEO, general manager, in his 11th season with Detroit. The most respected. Front office men in the game. Here's another one, two. There's another foul ball. First time for Zito since June of 2010. He's had back-to-back -back games with hits. A bun hit in St. Louis in this a line drive base hit into left. And two RBIs to go along with it. There's a one-two. Pagan. He's getting a good swing as Verlander has cranked it up to 97 miles per hour. Should end the inning. Infante to his left takes care of it, but the Giants add to their lead. Five nothing as Barry Zito's doing it on the mound at the plate. Back after this from your local Fox station.
Zito could not be going any better. Five nothing San Francisco on top as we go to the fifth inning and Zito is in on the hitting fun with an RBI base hit. Avisail Garcia is first up bottom three in the lineup and you expect a pinch hitter for Verlander who is up to 98 pitches on the night through four innings. Giants have five runs on six hits. The Tigers no runs on three hits. And Albuquerque goes back down to the bullpen. As Danny Worth is waiting to follow Avila to the plate here in the fifth. Here's a 1 0. 2 0 in a 5 0 game. Sixty six of the ninety eight pitches by Verlander in the last two innings. The Giants made him work. That's hard hit, but right at Crawford on a 2 0 pitch. One out. And you see how good that arm is. Of the young San Francisco shortstop. Here's a game summary Pablo Sandoval, third Giant World Series history with a two homer game, and he did it against Verlander in the first and in the third. Giants pitchers four straight games with an RBI. That's a postseason record in Verlander. Fifth career game, allowing two home runs to the same batter. Here's a Vila. One out, nobody on. And Alex takes a strike. The night is finished for Verlander and just a four-inning night. He allows five runs on six hits. That's a fair ball and out number two off the bat of Avila. And so we've seen the last of Verlander on the mound. And it's our Nikon replay. The faces of Justin Verlander who turns in his shortest start since he pitched four innings in game one of the 2011 LCS. A 3 2 loss to the Rangers. And that was that look of disbelief when his pitching coach, Jeff Jones, was coming out. And shortly thereafter, Pablo Sandoval got him for the second time in the game. Mm. Here's Worth, and there's strike one. So uncharacteristic of Justin Verlander. Like the last time he gave up more earned runs in a game. On September 8th against the Angels, he gave up six earned runs that night. Big breaking ball, and Worth is now in the hole 0 2. dugout two and two we asked Miguel Cabrera how he would approach Barry Zito he said take the single take the walk Take what he gives you. So far, he has not given the Tigers anything. That'll get out of play. And it stays two and two. And Worth broke his back. Guys talked about it during the pregame. In his World Series career. 0-2 record coming in. That was from his rookie season in 2006 against St. Louis.
2 2. Foul. Halfway through game number one, five nothing Giants. Pablo Sandoval due up second for San Francisco, bottom of the fifth, up by five. Completely redesigned 2013 Chevrolet Malibu. While the Tigers make a switch in pitchers, Jenny O invites you to switch to Turkey, and it's Al Albuquerque out of the bullpen, taking over for Verlander, and that breaking ball misses down and away with Scudero, Sandoval, Posey, the hitters. What a night for Pablo Sandoval. Another two out RBI hit for Scudero. That happened in the third inning. He scored on the home run by the guy behind him. Here comes a 1 1 pitch. Slow chopper to Infante. One out. Pablo Sandoval tonight. Two at bats, two home runs. 0 oh, 2 pitch in the first. Got on top of that high fastball at 95, and then with two out in the third, another 95 mile per hour fastball that he rode it out to left 360 feet. And he is shooting for the three home run club.
Pujols did it last year, Reggie in 77. The Babe did it twice in 26 and 28. And he loses his bat. Thankfully, that ball, or the bat rather, stayed on this side of that fence behind the on deck circle. It looked like uh, the knob of the bat had a chip in it, or perhaps it. It uh, that occurred when it hit the fence. You see the knob of the bat. I think it hit the fence, chipped the knob. That is a rarity for it to do that. But I think uh, the extraordinary thing about Sandoval is how different those pitches were. One was there. It is right there. I mean, how many times have you seen something like that happen? Here's a ball that bounces in one ball one strike so those pitches were so different one was up and in the other was low and away. That was about a 54 footer from Albuquerque. Albuquerque had to bounce back from right elbow surgery this year. Wasn't activated until the third week of August in the center. Sandoval with a three homer game in World Series game number one. Sandoval. I would think so. How about what the Giants have done for these fans here at home since the NLCS returned for game six and seven and now tonight two and a half games. They've outscored the opposition 21 to one. Sandoval had 12 home runs in the regular season. He has never had a three home run game ever until today. He's got six home runs this postseason. Half as many as he had during the regular season. One and two to count. Posey rolls it over to third. Nice play by Cabrera. Wow. Two out. The base is empty. The batter will be Hunter Pence. As we give you another look. Keep in mind the Giants had the fewest home runs in the majors, 103. And this ballpark, the toughest park in which to hit the ball out of. Here's Pence with two out. Six nothing game. Strike one. And the momentum by the Giants that they had from games five, six, and seven. It's trumped the rest that the Tigers had coming into this World Series five days off. So much surrounds the starting pitchers. Zito's been outstanding again, and Jim Leland handed the ball to the best in the game and the Giants have taken care of the rest. Now a 1 1 pitch. And another one bounces in there from Albuquerque. It's 2 and 1. Pence is struck out and bounced out. Here's the 2 1. Two and two. You know, the first two at bats by Sandoval, you think, well, two strikes. First in the first at bat, an 0-2 pitch. 
Verlander stayed with the fastball. Sandoval's a free swinger. He hit two fastballs out. Now this one in the mid 80s that he goes down to get and shoot out into center. So he's done it three different ways. Yeah, that's right. What a night. Two solo shots and a two run shot. Pablo Barry. Giants up 6 0. Series, we stand united in the fight against cancer with our partner Stand Up to Cancer. We ask you to please join Commissioner Seelig, Major League Baseball, Fox Sports, and the entire baseball family in standing up to cancer. And please go to standuptocancer.org to find out how you can help today. So it's happening in the seats, it's happening in the dugouts, and it happens here in our broadcast booth. Michael Weiner is our good friend at Fox and the head of the Players Association of Major League Baseball. He is in a fight, a strong man. It's great to see him at the ballpark tonight. And Shannon Ford is battling breast cancer and a part of the public relations department of the New York Mets. We want Shannon to know that we're thinking of her as we play here in San Francisco tonight. So as those cards are held up around this stadium, it just reminds all of us how cancer has touched every life in some shape or form with somebody you're related to, somebody you're close with, and the nice moment with the players joining in, the umpires, the managers, and these fans. Work that Stand Up to Cancer has done is unbelievable. It's, it's extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So you can go to Stand Up, the number two cancer.org, to find out how you can help today. That is well worth your time on the internet and something taken very seriously by Major League Baseball. It's been a great partnership. 
Meanwhile, Barry Zito is back to work into the sixth inning. And with help from Pablo Sandoval, with help from Gregor Blanco defensively, Barry Zito, Tim, continues to change the eye level of hitters. He doesn't blow you away, but he is effective again here tonight. Did not allow a run in his start in game five of the NLCS, and nothing tonight. When we came on the air tonight, we talked about the importance of Austin Jackson getting on. And Barry Zito has retired, and you heard from Doug Fister about how important it was to get the leading lady, as Joe Becker, an old pitching coach, used to say. But that leadoff man, that is pivotal uh, to the success of any pitcher. And Austin Jack Jackson coming up, that's happened only one time. Prince Fielder led off the fourth inning with a single. So the leadoff batter through the first five has gotten on only once. And they're doing it, the Tigers. Against a left-handed starter and Kenny Rosenthal, that's been a problem for this Tiger team. That's right, Joe. People who have watched the Tigers during the regular season should not be surprised by what Zito is doing tonight. The Tigers were only 26 and 25 in games left-handers started against in this season. Batting average, slugging percentage, much lower against lefties than righties, and those trends have continued into the postseason. Now. The Giants are starting another left hand Madison Bumgarner in game two tomorrow night. But it's the soft tossers like Zito who have given the Tigers the most trouble. Two and oh is the count. And even though this game has been lopsided. You know with the kind of firepower the Tigers have in this lineup. They don't feel out of this ball game. There's a strike and again we'll say what we said earlier. The bullpen is loaded for the Giants and any hint of trouble. You have to believe Bruce Bochy will get those guys active. And the biggest hint in this inning would be allowing Austin Jackson to get on base. Two and one the count. Jackson one for two and he's on base. He shoots one down the left field line going to get it as Blanco. Cuts it off but it's a leadoff stand up double for Austin Jackson who's two out of three tonight. I think we'll see action in the giant bullpen and the one thing the giant bullpen can do it can left and right and left and right. They have three left handers down there. So this is uh, their time as far as the bullpen is concerned but Detroit's trying to make it their time. Here's Infante now one for two on the night. No action yet for the Giants in their pen as we play here in the sixth. Infante has a single. He is struck out. David Getty longtime pitching coach here with the Giants. Watching closely with Barry Zito working to Infante. Shows Bunt takes a strike. Just thinking Infante trailing by six with Detroit. He's a he's a very good bunter. And Sandoval at third even with the bag, but a good time to do it. He wasn't even with a bag prior to that first. That's pick. right. That's right. He was deeper. Here's the 01. Inside, a ball and a strike. So after Infante, you get Miguel Cabrera. After Cabrera, you get Prince Fielder. After Fielder, you get Delman Young, who was the MVP of the ALCS. So that was a big leadoff double by Austin Jackson. Trying to get something started for the Tigers. Fly ball into center. Back is Pagan in front of the track. One out. Tagging going to third is Jackson. And Infante one for three tonight. The World Series is sponsored by Bank of America, official bank of Major League Baseball. By Gatorade. Gatorade knows it all begins within. Win from within. And by Genio Turkey Store. Make the switch. Look for Genio Turkey at a store near you. Runner at third, one out. The batter Cabrera was walked and lined out. He was robbed of a hit, maybe an RBI hit, in the third inning on a nice catch by Blanco and left. Breaking ball doesn't break. 
in this situation, the Giants would take a sacrifice fly. It's one of those situations where you're really not as concerned about the guy at third because you've got a six run lead. And this guy is so dangerous, you'll take that sack fly in a second to get the out. Up and away again, it's 2 0. On deck is Fielder. He's one for two. Also a situation where there's no thought of pitching around Cabrera. There's Delman Young waiting. Hoping he gets a chance with the men on. There's a 2 0. May have chased. 2 and 1. Looks like he chased ball three. And they count two balls and a strike. Lead off double by Jackson at third with one out. Strike two. It's time at the plate. Get the feeling there are 47,000 pitching coaches pulling for Zito in this ballpark. Back in watching a 2 2 pitch, runner at third, one out. And a fly ball into center. That ball's going to drop for a hit. Tigers are on the board, and it's Cabrera who delivers their first run of the night. A double, a fly out to center, and now the AL's Triple Crown winner, Miguel Cabrera, makes it a five-run game. Good two-strike hitter. And Pagan in center field has to respect his power, of course. 44 home runs on the year. So he's playing deep. And the Tigers score a run. Tim Lincecum is going to start to get loose. Thing about Lincecum, even when he starts a game, he never needs more than 15 pitches to warm up. Here's Fielder, smothered by Posey at the plate. Prince is one of six players in the history of the game to switch leagues and end up with 30 or more home runs, 100 or more RBIs. Is Teammate Miguel Cabrera did it when he went from the Marlins to the Tigers in 08. That is outside of the count 2 0. Delman Young on deck, Tim. And if Fielder gets aboard with Delman Young coming up in what is a five run game, Lincecum may be right into the action. I get your drift, and I think you're right. Here's a 2 0 pitch. That's into left field. Blanco, another. His second of the game. Two out in the inning. What a play by Gregor Blanco to rob Prince Fielder. And you could put a blanket over the distance of where that first catch was with the second catch. He robbed Cabrera in the third, and now he gets Prince Fielder here in the sixth. And here's the drive by Cabrera. Just about the same spot. Now it's Delman Young. That's up the middle, a base hit. Cabrera will stop at second with two out. And Johnny Peralta will be the batter. Peralta's had a very big postseason. 
Will he face Zito or will it be Lincecum? Posey out to talk to Zito, and this is uh, one of those conversations catchers don't like because Posey is buying Lincecum time right now. I don't think Bruce Bochy can afford to wait much longer, but keep in mind, Lincecum warms up just like that. When he starts a game, rarely more than 15 pitches, and he's ready. Zito got the start. Zito doesn't want to come out, but he's done his job tonight as he exits in the sixth. Is into the game with two on, two out, and Johnny Peralta at the plate. Fifth game of the postseason. Ball one inside. Peralta started this night hitting 343 in the postseason. Two home runs. They came in game four of the ALCS. He is a shortstop with power. Strike one. Lincecum started game four of the NLCS. All the other action has been out of the bullpen. He got a win in relief. Division series in Cincinnati in relief of Zito. Strike two. Prior to this year, Lincecum had never pitched out of the bullpen professionally. Lincecum slams the door on the top of the sixth. Zito started the inning, started the ball game, pitched great. Gave way to Lincecum, who got out of the jam. It's a five-run game, 6-1. to one.
it first up against Al Albuquerque and Albuquerque misses up and away ball one. Brandon drew an important walk in the fourth inning. He scored on a two out RBI hit by Barry Zito. Pops it up into left. Delman Young to his right. One out. If you go back to 2006, remember the Tigers had six days off before the start of the World Series. This year, five. The score of that game in 2006 in game one was seven to two tonight, six to one. Verlander was the starter and loser then. He's the starter here tonight. Remains to be seen if he gets a decision. And the hits. Tigers have six tonight, had only four against Anthony Reyes, a right-hander who made that start. Pitched brilliantly for the Cardinals to begin the 06 World Series. Here's Gregor Blanco. He may be 0 for 2 at the plate, but he is 2 for 2 out in left field with diving catches, one to Rob. Cabrera and the latest to Rob Fielder. And the last one was a big one. And I mean a big one. Here's a 1 1 pitch from Albuquerque. On the outside corner, strike two. Blanco is grounded out, struck out. Lincecum will go back out there for the seventh. Nobody is up in the bullpen. That's up and away, two and two. That may change if the Giants get something going offensively. As Lincecum is two hitters away. Yeah, I think one on, he hits. Two on, maybe a pinch hitter. Here's a two two. Two out. And strikeout number two for Albuquerque. Tomorrow, Foxtoberfest continues. A month long extravaganza. Great matchups, and it's game two of the World Series on the air at 7 30 Eastern, 4 30 Pacific. And a matchup of Doug Fister, the right hander, Madison Bumgarner, who's been working out some kinks in the bullpen. The left hander will make the start for the Giants 0 and 2 this postseason. Fister has been deadly on right handed hitters and so good when healthy after getting picked up last year by Dave Dombrowski from Seattle. That's down and in. A check swing by Crawford. The two out, it's ball one. Brandon fly to left in the third, grounded out to second in the fourth. Breaking ball is in for strike one. Talking to Jim Leland before the game, he said he wanted to wait until his club was on the road instead of at the end of that blowout victory in game four against the Yankees in the ALCS. They get Valverde an inning to try and get some of his confidence back. And that inning may be forthcoming. He's been the closer until recently, he had a rough outing against the A's and then blew a save in game one of the ALCS. Phil Koch took care of the closing the rest of the way. Crawford strike two. Valverde 49 for 49 last season. And Joe, we did that game the first Saturday of the regular season. Detroit and the Red Sox when Valverde blew his first save of the season. And the Tigers were saying, well, that's out of the way. Not another 49 for 49, but he has really had a bad year for the Tigers. Here is a 2-2. Crawford takes up and away. Albuquerque started to leave the mound, and he has to come back with a full count. Three two count that one missed up and away Crawford two out nobody on rolls it over right side and Fonte to his left nice play 
And the inning is over. We go to the seventh inning, game one of this World Series. Tigers coming up, down by five, back after this from your local Fox station. Came out of the bullpen in the top of the sixth. Now he will start fresh in the top of the seventh. And he will deal with Garcia, the rookie. And then Avila, and a pinch hitter. Valverde continuing to get loose. Strike one. Two time Cy Young Award winner in 08 and 09. Out of the bullpen for Bruce Bochi. Bochi would love to get him through this inning and then lift him for a pinch hitter in the bottom of this seventh. Garcia is grounded out twice. That one rides up and in a ball and a strike. It's almost a twofold reason for Lincecum to do well here in the World Series to restore his confidence so he can get back in the Giants' rotation next year. The guy who led the National League in strikeouts. Three straight years. A rough season in 2012, 10 and 15. That is strike two. ERA of 5.18. You mentioned it, Tim, when he made that start in St. Louis game four, 17 wild pitches. Velocity not what it was. Trying to get it back. Furs now working out of the stretch. Even with nobody on, the one two. Smothered by Posey, two and two. Sail Garcia on 
Jordan two and two. Ball three. And like it was to him with Zito. There's not going to be a lot of room for error here for Lincecum with the kind of weapons Bruce Bochy has at his disposal in the bullpen. Lopez, I felt to see a Romo. Left handers and right handers. It was one and two, now it's three and two. And it'll stay there. Lincecum is the type of pitcher that can get away. With a decrease in velocity, if the illusion of a strike is still there, that's very, very important in his arsenal. It's a lot of deception with that delivery, the splitter, the changeup. He's in a position now where he's got to throw a fastball with a five-run lead. He gets a swinging strikeout to start the seventh. So the illusion of a strike was there. That more than velocity is what Lincecum was lacking. Actually, that's a slider, not a fastball. And it serves as the illusion of a strike. I, uh, I mentioned in the league championship series, David Cohn's comment this year doing a Yankee game that if a pitcher can throw strikes that look like balls and balls that look like strikes, that's the right formula. Well, now nobody on Avila takes ball one. Alex tonight 0 for 2. It was a decision to be made by Jim Leland with the start of Verlander, and he called on Avila. They've got a good option in Gerald Laird. He won it all with St. Louis last year, and now he's back in the World Series. With Detroit, and he had a very good season and allowed Avila to not get worn down as much during the course of the season like he did last year. And he limped through the postseason. That misses. And it's two and one. Tigers won 88 games and won the AL Central by three over the White Sox. They were a team that was five games under 500 on the road under Jim Leland. Off the hands, strike two. Giants won 94 games and ran away with the NL West. Full count. And that's got Lensicum shaking his head as that pitch bounced in on two and two. Faced three strikeouts for Tim Lincecum. All three swinging strikeouts. Peralta to end the top of the sixth. Garcia Avila here in the seventh. The batter will be Quentin Berry. Bat for Albuquerque who went two innings, allowed one run on one hit. And hit the third home run of the night by Pablo Sandoval. Strike one. I'll tell you, Joe, I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but that little nod of relief after that strikeout with Posey out there showed a to me a relaxed expression on Lincecum's face. Maybe not the weight of the world off your shoulders, but relief. And relaxation. 
Here's a chop to the right side. Scooter awaits. Gets the speedy bearing. When you talk about relief, that's exactly what Tim Lincecum has provided tonight for Barry Zito and the Giants. Time to stretch in game one. It's Rennell Brooks Moon for the introduction of God Bless America. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps as we honor America and our military troops around the world with the singing of God Bless America. Please welcome from the San Francisco Police Department, Tenderloin Station, Sergeant Jerry Darcy. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. Twenty thirteen Ford Escape. It's what happens when you go further. 
by MasterCard. Proud supporter of Stand Up to Cancer. That's MasterCard. That's priceless. And by Windows 8. Jose Valverde will take over. Third pitcher of the night. Verlander, four innings. Albuquerque, two. And now Valverde, who all told regular and postseason last year, is 52 of 52 save opportunities and he has lost that closer role He's struggling against Oakland and then coming right back two games later in game one of the ALCS and blowing a lead in the ninth inning a four nothing lead that was about as bad a body language after that Raul Ibanez pinch hit home run as I have ever seen in a pitcher Joe one ball, one strike. Trying to almost will it not to go over the fence in right center at Yankee Stadium. It did, and that tied it at four. This season, 36 of 42 in save opportunities. Opponents hitting 243 against him. Regular and postseason. Last year, just over 200 at 204. A lot of his stuff is flattened out. Misses at 92. He was working with his pitching coach, Jeff Jones, during that time off, the five days off. It was Jeff, and they found a flaw. They thought the right leg was dragging. And he's letting the ball go in that process, and it was taking some of the velocity away from his pitching stuff. He's facing Tim Lincecum, who throws right. Bats left and four hits during the regular season. And the counts two and two. It is just a a very very short time where you have to correct that flaw and you have to do it on baseball's biggest stage. It's very very difficult. But the idea of time to pitch him is tonight. And Jim Leland knows that. A good swing. Ron Lindsey coming at 91 mile per hour pitch. Leland, a very interested observer, what Al Valverde can do. Getting an inning of work in, and he is running full. Pretty good pitch. Didn't get the call. He stares in, and it's a full count. Yankees hit 157 with the Red Hot Giants. Six runs, all three home runs hit by Sandoval. Here in game one. Lincecum strikes out. Got to in game box score for the Giants. Who else would you highlight? The man in the number three spot. Three for three with three home runs. He will get another at bat before the end of the night. As Angel Pagan walks in. Posey has a hit tonight. Pagan, this batter, bounced one off the third base bag, which Led to a three run third inning. Went for a double, his only hit tonight. One out, nobody on. Pagan takes a strike. This may seem like a small thing uh, to the average fan, but I'll tell you, players really appreciate this. You've got a two time Cy Young Award winner who gave up six earned runs tonight, a very short period of time. And he went in and he came back out. That says an awful lot. I mean, that speaks volumes and tells you what kind of guy Justin Verlander is. And teammate. And teammate. There are very, there are very few pitchers that are team oriented. It's such an individual position. Nothing starts until they initiate the action. So, by their very nature, the definition of it is individual. Here's Pagan lining one into the right field corner. Garcia can't get to it to cut it off, and Pagan will be content with a stand-up double here with one out in the seventh. 
His second double of the night. Pagan led the National League in triples with 15, and he had that on his mind. The splitter, that's the first splitter Valverde has thrown, and it's crushed by Pagan. We've seen this throughout the postseason from Pagan. The salute after the double. Here is Scudero. One for three. RBI single and a run scored in that three run third. Best fastball of the night from Valverde, and it's strike one. Joaquin Benoit, the right hander, is up, not throwing yet. And I'm sure that Jim Leland hates the fact that he's got to get Benoit up, trying to restore confidence in Valverde. Such a big part of what the Tigers have in their bullpen, Valverde. 0 oh 2. A two strike, two out RBI hit for Scudero in the third. And he's set up at 0 and 2 here. Left side, base hit. Pagan makes it 7 to 1. As he scores on another two strike hit by Marco Scudero. There are a lot of words to describe Scudero's performance in the postseason. I can't think of many more than relentless. He just does not stop. His first World Series opportunity here tonight. Two more hits. And here is Pablo Sandoval looking for home run number four. Boy, does that sound strange. <laughs> Ball one, down and away. He's on a list, a World Series list with Babe Ruth, Reggie Jackson, and Albert Pujols. It's never happened in the postseason. One player to hit four home runs in one game. He's got a base hit. It's into left center field. Scudero will turn and go. And it's a four hit night for Pablo Sandoval. Time for the Nikon replay. Albert Pujols last year, a three homer game in game three of the World Series. And now tonight, game one for the Giants against the Tigers. Pablo, solo shot, two run shot, solo shot in his first three at bats. First and third, only one out, a chance for more. Buster Posey at the plate. And if this is an audition to regain his job as the closer for Valverde, it's not going well. Posey one for three, takes a pitch down and in, ball one.
ball there, and it's a 1 1 count. Posey just nine hits in 48 at bats in the postseason. Yeah, Buster's pulling off. If he goes to right field with a couple of hits, it's amazing how that can make you well. You get back into the position of driving the ball. That's into right. A base hit. And it's 8-1 Giants here in the seventh. Even if it's a clunker. And there will be no confidence rebuilding for Valverde tonight. That's the end of his evening. As Benoit is getting ready. Valverde out of the ball game. To his dugout after allowing four straight hits. Two runs responsible for the two men on. And awkward in that dugout when he came back. And we, we were watching that uh, while we were away, and it's just the loneliest feeling when no one knows what to do. Joe was talking about uh, discovering a flaw in his motion in the World Series, certainly. No place to test it, but they have to do that. And, uh, and even even in shaking his hands and patting him on the back, it was so awkward and lonely. Uh, what their, what his teammates were going through, and he was going through. Hunter Pence at the plate, two on one out. First pitch a strike. Talking to Dotel. Benoit forced to relieve Valverde here in the seventh. Joaquin having a tough time seeing the signs put down by Avila. Asking questions that have no answers. Here's the 0 1. Hunter Pence. One ball, one strike. Now 
George Contos, the right-hander, will get loose. This has turned into a long half inning in the bottom of the seventh. Two more runs and 8-1. Giant lead. The 1-1. Back and out of play, strike two. That's us as we come toward the top of the hour, game one of this 2012 World Series. San Francisco has led from the first inning on. A home run by Pablo Sandoval. He had another in the third. He had another in the fifth. It's at one point six to nothing. It's now eight to one. That gets away. The runners will advance to second and third on a wild pitch by Benoit. Looked like a, a splitter. Martin all fastball. Catchers are not expecting fastball. No, it was a splitter. Trust your instincts. The ball was. Uh, it was a tough, tough play for Alex Avila. Now the infield has to be pulled in. And I would imagine we'll see Contos at the top of the inning. Porcello now goes down to get loose for the Tigers. Here's a 2 2. Two out. And a strikeout of Hunter Pence. Third time he has struck out tonight. Sandoval with three home runs. That's his first. That's his second. And that's his third off Albuquerque. The straightaway center, 422 feet. And in this inning, a single. He's at third. Posey at second, two out. For Brandon Belt. Good pitch. Bottom fell out of that. Strike one. That was a good splitter. Benoit with very, very good stuff. Most good splitters, hitters swing over the top of them. And they're rarely strikes. The good ones are out of the strike zone. Here's the 0 1. Two. Belt is flied out twice, walked and scored a run. There's Porcello. But it's Benoit on the mound now. With two out, runners at second and third, and an 0 2 count. Eight to one game. Belt a 320 hitter here at home. 2012. That just missed two and two. 96 from Benoit. Sandoval and Posey, the runners on with two out. Two more runs home here in the seventh. And a 2 2 pitch. Inning is over. Back to back strikeouts by Benoit of Pence and Belt. But it's been all Giants tonight. Two more runs on the board. A seven run lead as we played seven in game one.
is Dr. Danny Castellano on the Fox Hit series, The Mindy Project, which airs on Tuesdays at 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central. So we're obviously the Fox seats because Philip Phillips was down the row and he did a great job with the Star Spangled Banner at the beginning of our night. American Idol winner last year and a foul out of play off to the right. As Lincecum goes back out there, Contos was getting loose. But Tim, who finished off the sixth, worked here in the eighth after having a one, two, three, seven. One and one the count on Jackson, who's two for three. Two and one. I thought those two extra runs the Giants scored meant that Contos would go back out there and then perhaps Bruce Bochy would have Lincecum ready for tomorrow night. But he's probably trying to space him and have a couple of days between tonight's performance and maybe have him ready for game three. Yeah, he may tell you that yeah. Lincecum's not going to work back to back games. Doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Mm -hmm. count. Right. Jackson trying to get on base for the third time tonight. And do it leading off an inning for the second time he went. And that's strikeout number four for Tim Lincecum. One out here in the eighth. Well, we were talking about the illusion of a strike. And again, Austin Jackson goes too far. You know, the Detroit Tigers know of no other pitcher in the American League who throws like Tim Lincecum. He is so unusual in that delivery. Velocity is important, but not as important with most pitchers. He jumps at the hitter. Here's Infante. Ball one. Omar one for three, singled in the first. The Tigers put two on in the first, but then Fielder popped out. Young bounced out. At the bottom of the inning, Pablo Sandoval hit a home run, and the Giants have never trailed here in game one. One out, nobody on, 2 0 the count. And Infante, who saw plenty of Lincecum in the National League, he. And Lincecum hits the outside corner, 2 and 1. Zito. On his way to a 2 0 record this postseason. Now watching after his first World Series start in his long career. Two out. Scudero takes care of Infante. This year, two lucky consumers won the chance to play with MLB legends through the Pepsi Max Field of Dreams program. Fans voted, and the game will be played in the hometown of AO consumer winner Johnny Parati from Rochester, New York. Parati, whose friends and five AL MLB legends will host the NL consumer winner, Stephen Catchmark from Washington, D.C. Log on to MLB.com slash Pepsi Max for details. Two out, nobody on. Here is Cabrera. Gale's been on base twice with a walk and RBI single. There isn't anybody that's a more imposing figure at the plate than Miguel Cabrera standing right on top of it, waving the bat. Where do you go? That's up in the count one and one. He uh, almost has no weaknesses. He's so quick inside. If you can get him to chase, and he takes enough walks to where he doesn't do that a lot. Fouls it away right side, strike two. There are two guys in the major leagues to me that have almost no holes. Albert Pujols, when he's hitting well, and Miguel Cabrera. Still loud and still packed here at AT&T Park. Two out, one two pitch. A strikeout by Lincecum, who has been perfect through two and a third. Bottom of the eighth inning rolls in. 
number 55 pitching well as the Giants lead by seven. you get the okay and the assistance from a band like the who it's got to be a big event and we thank the who for allowing us to use the music in this world series game number one as we go to the bottom of the eighth Gregor Blanco against the fifth pitch of the night for the Tigers Rick Porcello Blanco first up Go 0 for 3, but he's made two outstanding catches in left. Now in the hole 0 and 2. Porcello made 31 starts during the regular season, was 10 and 12. ERA of just over four and a half. That's strike three. And one out in the bottom of the eighth. The World Series is sponsored by Layaways back at Walmart on select items. See stores for details and fees. By the Nikon 1, a different kind of Nikon. And by Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Tablet, phone, best of both. The next big thing is here. Here's Crawford. Just so you know, the three homer game by Pablo Sandoval is the second three homer game in the history of this ballpark, which goes back to 2000. This is the 13th season the Giants have played in this beautiful stadium. The only other guy to do it and have a three homer game, Kevin Elster of the Dodgers, longtime New York Met, who did it. On April 11th, 2000, in the first game 
in this ballpark. How about that? And everybody thought, well, this ballpark, the ball is really going to carry. No, sir. Here's one in the center. Will that carry to Jackson? Yep. Two out and a nice catch by Austin Jackson. And we welcome you inside our broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Joe Buck. That's Tim McCarver. Aaron Andrews down in the field along with Kenny Rosenthal. And uh, who could have expected that Justin Verlander would struggle here tonight? And who could have expected that Barry Zito would end up lasting longer and out pitching Justin Verlander? And who could have expected uh, Pablo Sandoval hitting three home I runs? I had that one. Oh, you did? Yeah, I knew that. Was right. Here's a ground ball left side. What a play. Miguel Cabrera takes a hit away from Aubrey Huff, the pinch hitter. And that will send game one into the ninth inning. How about the last two defensive plays by the Tigers? Austin Jackson in center. Miguel Cabrera at third, ninth inning. 8 1 Giants. up to cancer share a, vo a photo of the person you stand up for on Instagram using hashtag stand up for as Joaquin Arias takes over at third base Pablo Sandoval has done his damage for the night with his bat a four hit night of three homer night and Jose Mijares is the left hander with Kanto still up, right handed batters coming up. This is likely a one hitter outing for Miharis. Two strikes. The Giants, of all things, had problems in the sixth inning. And so they picked up Miharis from Kansas City on waivers on August 6th. And Bruce Bochy is saying he actually helped this team in the sixth inning because it was odd. 
Other teams capitalizing and beating Giants, the Giants, on with runs in the sixth inning. Arias had to play perfectly, gets it on a short hop and gets the out. Just into the game. And Mejares goes one third of an inning. By the way, that's on the heels of Tim Lincecum. You've got a couple of Cy Young Award winners sitting there, veterans. The lefty Zito, who got the start, he'll get the win tonight, barring a miraculous comeback. And Lincecum went two and a third, no hits, five strikeouts. Mejares, his night finished in game one. Cantos coming in. postseason out of the bullpen for Bruce Bochy just under 11 innings pitched one run three hits in tonight he picked up seven outs make it seven outs and five by strikeouts I mean his stuff is better right now coming out of the bullpen been really for an elongated time at any point during the regular season as Delman Young swings and misses. Lincecum started to get his stuff back as a starter prior to his final two starts of the regular season. As Contos gets two quick ones on Delman Young. But then his last two starts were not good. And Lincecum started this postseason in the bullpen, and he's been a big plus. Delman Young with one out, nobody on. Contos. Ground ball right side, base hit. Delman Young is on with one out here in the ninth. No two pitch, and Young found a hole over the right side between Scudero and Belt. So you think of the last three innings, and you can't help but compare the two relievers. Valverde, Jim Leland putting him in to try to restore his confidence. The Giants scored two runs against him. The body language going into the dugout. And now you look at Lincecum retiring seven in a row, five strikeouts, laughing that same easy laugh and smile that he had back in 2010. You he can, was four and one that postseason. Yeah, I mean, you can see the peace on his face. The game can be cruel. And the game can be uplifted. Here's a 1 0. That breaking ball misses 2 0. Peralta at the plate. Johnny is 0 for 3. And it was Peralta, Lincecum faced out of the bullpen with two on, a run home, two out. Lincecum struck him out. That ended the top of the sixth. 2 1.
Rich Contos, on the other hand, traded for Chris Stewart from the New York Yankees right after spring training, and you know it had to enter his mind that, uh oh, there goes my chance of being in the World Series. I'll be with the Giants, not the Yankees. Here's a fly ball into center. Back is Pagan at the wall. It's gone. Johnny Peralta's made this a five run game. And he's hit now three home runs over his last two postseason games as he gets his first hit of the night. In a ballpark that is so difficult to homer, we have seen three homers to center and an opposite field homer to left. Pagan Ball hitting got a piece. Pagan's glove. And then the top of the wall and bouncing up and over. And a subdued celebration for the home run for Peralta as that just makes this a five run game. And Dave Brighetti is out to talk to Contos with Jeremy Affelt, the left hander, getting loose now in case this inning starts to get out of hand. Andy Dirks will be the pinch hitter. And Pagan knows that he came awfully close off his glove and over the wall to make it 8 3. Garcia lifted for Dirks, who hit 322 during the regular season. Here's Affel. After Dirks, it's Avila. Another left handed batter. That's strike two. Andy Dirks backs out of there, gets back in. Third pinch hitter of the night for the Tigers. And he grounds back to Contos. Giants one out away from a game one victory, two out in the ninth. It's up to Alex Avila to try to keep the top of the ninth inning alive. He has struck out, grounded out twice. The game that started is a matchup between Barry Zito making his first World Series start and Justin Verlander, the reigning AL Cy Young Award winner and MVP. All the rest for Verlander, all the rest for the Tigers. But all the momentum for the Giants. They got a run in the bottom of the first, never trailed, and lead by five in the ninth. The 0 1. Ball and a strike. It's a matchup of Doug Fister, the right hander, tomorrow night in game two against Madison Bumgarner, who's 0 2 this postseason. Here is a 1 1 pitch. 2 and 1. The Giants lost game one of their division series here at home to the Reds. Lost game one of the NLCS here at home to the Cardinals. As the count goes to 3 and 1. One out away from a victory in game one of the World Series before this home crowd. On Santiago on deck. Two out, nobody on. Strike two on Avila. Zito tonight, five and two thirds, one run on six hits. Barry's one strike away from his first World Series victory. Three 
two is high in a two out walk. And now Ramon Santiago will come off the bench. And, your please. and we'll see if Bochi will stay with Cantos. The answer is no. Trying to get George Cantos going. He comes in, allows a single, a homer, a two out walk. Affelt coming in to try and end game one of this World Series. Top of the ninth inning, one on, two out. And Jeremy Affelt, left-hander, and a good one. He's into his ninth game of this postseason. Santiago, one pitch. That is it. Giants win game one of the 2012 World Series. The Giants stay hot. And they did it tonight behind a pitching performance from Barry Zito and Tim Lincecum. And an unbelievable offensive night from the same two guys. Scudero was good. Pablo Sandoval, unbelievable. Three home runs in a World Series game for only the fourth time in history. Remarkable. He hit a solo shot in the first, a two run shot in the third, a solo blast in the fifth, had a single in the seventh for good measure. Scudero, two more RBI hits, two more runs scored, and that 2 3 combination has made Bruce Bochy smile quite a bit in this 2012 postseason. Here they are. 95 mile per hour fastball on 0 and 2 from Verlander. Home run to center. Another 95 mile per hour fastball home run to left. And on a pitch in the 80s against Albuquerque went down to get it and rode it out to center. Plenty of offense. And the final 8-3. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. Joe, thanks. 
Pablo, you join a list now with Babe Ruth, Reggie Jackson, and Albert Pujols as players to hit three home runs in a World Series. How does that sound? Excited, excited to be part of the history. You know, it's one of the things when you're a little kid, you dream in, in, in playing the World Series, you know, and your dream come true. And you told me as a little kid you didn't even hit three home runs before. What did Justin Verlander throw to you that you were able to take him out of the park twice? No, uh, he, he got a good stuff. He he been throwing me fastball. That's what I, you know, the pitch I was approaching, I was looking for, you know. I, I get a good pitch to hit. There was so much made about Tigers and the time off that they had. What advantage did it give you guys that you won three straight and only had one off day before you played game one of the World Series? You know, I give, we give it advantage, you know, because we played uh, uh, two days ago, the last game. We get day off yesterday. So we, we still hot, you know, we, we come here, play our game. All right, thanks so much. Appreciate it. Joe, back over to you. All right, Aaron, thank you. And it's up to the Tigers and tomorrow night in particular, Doug Fister to try and find a way to quiet the Giants' bats. In particular, that 2-3 combination. How about Zito tonight? How good was he? First World Series start. He gets the win, pitching five and two-thirds. Take a break. Come back to San Francisco after this.